bottled water and a bank card. Tonight, police are outlining the crucial clues that helped them track down a Chicago police officer's accused killer. Xavier Tate Jr. appeared in court today to face charges for the shooting death of Officer Luis Huesca. CBS 2's Sarah Maki is in the newsroom with more on what we learned about the investigation today. Sarah? Sure. Police gave an update two days after Tate's arrest, walking through a number of key pieces of evidence, but stopping short when asked if anyone gave them his location or if anyone was eligible for the combined $100,000 reward for information. It's difficult to say any one bit of information led us to where we are today. Police say they had video from 90 sources and community help in their search for Xavier Tate Jr. Some of the early footage giving them crucial information in identifying their suspect. After locating video of Tate in the area of the shooting, detectives traced his movements back to a business where he purchased a bottle of water using a relative's bank card. Both the water bottle and the clothing Tate was seen on video wearing earlier that day were located near where Huesca's stolen car was located. Our camera capturing video of a water bottle next to an evidence marker at one crime scene. In court, prosecutors acknowledging he made purchases with his mom's EBT card. Prosecutors saying Tate traveled in the 10 day manhunt to Rockford, Illinois, Madison, Wisconsin, and Dubuque, Iowa. Please come to the door. Though they ultimately found him in a Glendale Heights apartment unit Wednesday afternoon. DuPage authorities charging another man, Malik Murphy, with concealing or aiding a fugitive. Though Chicago police would not confirm how these two men are related, they say the arrests should bring comfort to Officer Luis Huesca's family. This past week, <sighs> this past week has been unimaginable for the family of Officer Huesca. Amidst their grief, they face the additional burden of knowing his killer was still free. That Malik Murphy, the Glendale Heights man, has since been released and is due in court again on a class four felony May 28th. In the newsroom, Sarah Maki, CBS 2 News. All right, Sarah, thank you.